Hi folks, welcome back. So, in the last video we did some work around the charts. Um, my report's not done, but I'd like to clean it up a little bit more before I do anything else to make it a little bit more presentable as I'm working through it. So, some of the simple stuff you see here, you know, click to add title, the execution time. Uh, you see these at the beginning, uh, usually when you open any report and start anew. You have this title and then you have this footer area where you have, by default, the execution time. Uh, the interesting thing about this, you know, the title is pretty straightforward. It says my for let's just change it, my first paginated report. So you can just change the text if you want. Uh, but you see here by default, this will get this will run into uh, this particular area. So what I want to do is actually make this a little bit bigger, and you see, oh wait, it's actually going to overlap with this as well. So I have a couple options here. I can take these elements, highlight them, and then just simply move them down. Make that a little bigger. Or I could make the font smaller if I so chose. And then once I've done that, I can go and I can drag this area back up if I choose. Now the reason I always drag this area back up is because by default it will go and auto expand this stuff. I don't need to leave that white space there, otherwise it will show up on my report. Now something else interesting here, you see the execution time. So this is one of these things that we call a built-in field. Now when you're using Power BI Report Builder and you look in the left-hand panel, you see that there's a number of folders here. I've mentioned this previously. The built-in fields are directly related to items that you have by default as an option to add into your report. However, the interesting thing about this is that for many of these, these are still somewhat specific to the reporting services of the report server um, experience versus that of Power BI. So things like the report server URL, uh, that's probably not something you're going to find all that valuable right now in the context of Power BI. However, the execution time, well, that's pretty straightforward. It's going to give you the time that the actual report was when and executed. User ID is something that I know folks would be very interested in. If I go and I drag that onto my canvas, and I see here, okay, now I've got my user ID, and I'll just stick it. No, I won't worry about the look and feel of it right now. I'll just put it here. And actually, you know what? I will change the font. Uh, that's one of those things that uh, we need to go and clean up a bit is this. Uh, when you drag items on here, it doesn't actually drag it in Seg UI. And since that's the default font, it seems kind of silly. Okay, so I've got my report, my user IDs here. It's like, okay, great. So I want to go run this report. And now I'll see in my footer. Oh, look. Fin Cyber PC, and then the time that I'm actually going around. This my title's nice and clean. It's still all fitting on one page, but I didn't make this quite big enough to show you the actual user ID. So, interestingly enough, this is the name of my computer here in my home network, but it's not showing me the, my user, my UPN, or what I've logged into the Power BI service with. This is a very similar issue that you would go and see if you're using Power BI Desktop. You know, I'm sure anybody who's worked with RLS and Power BI Desktop is very familiar with this idea that the username that I may have on my machine is different than that when I actually load the report up to the service. So if I want to make sure I actually can see the entire user ID there, I would widen that out, and then I can rerun my report. <clears throat> and then you'll see Sin Cyber PC CFINL. Okay, so now I've got that, and I've got the time that the report is actually executed. Well, what if I want to add a picture to this? I mean, uh, oftentimes what I like to do is add a company logo or something like this in the upper part of the report, so I need, can add an actual picture to my report. So if I want to change and add an image, I have a couple things I can do. I can right-click, and I can go add an image, or I could do insert an image up here. But I'm going to go ahead and add an image. And I'm going to choose an image off of my local PC. So here's Paginated Bear, which I know many of you are familiar with. And now it's just sitting there in the context of my image folder. So I'm going to make a little bit more room for Paginated Bear here. And I'm going to actually drag it onto the canvas. And then I could name my what my image box is. I'll call it Pagey. All right. And then I have a couple options here. I can use either use an embedded uh, image, which is exactly what I just did. I added the image to the file. I could do an external image, and that'd be a URL, or I could use it from a database, and I could actually use a binary file, a binary format that's in my database. And so many of you have any used uh, AdventureWorks, you know that there are images stored in there for the different elements in the product catalog. So I'm going to stick with the embedded one. I'm going to use paginated bear. 
And then for size, I have a few options here. I can either clip it to make sure it fits inside the item, which I probably don't want to do. I can resize the image to make sure it fits in there, which again, won't leave the proportions properly necessarily. Or I can say, you know what? I want to make sure this fits proportional to whatever uh, the size of my image uh, element is. Or I could just say, no, no, forget it. I want the full size. But I want it to fit proportionally, which is the default. And then I have something cool here where I could actually set the visibility. And I just want it to show that what I'm going to show in a later series, and some of you may have seen in the context of my sample report, is that uh, depending on what I select for a parameter or what I uh, what we do with um, certain items, it, it hides the picture if you don't select a certain item in your dropdown. So Interestingly enough, uh, you can set an expression here, and I'll show you that in a later video about, hey, I want to show this picture, but only at certain times. So I'm going to say, okay, that's fine. I want to have a border on this, like that, and then, ta-da, there's Paginary Report Bearer. So now if I move them up to the top, you see it's still going to say in that size, but right there, there's my picture, ta-da, and now if I go and run the report, There's Pagina Report Bear up there in the header area of my report. Now, this still, eh, it's still okay. Let's go ahead and we're going to change the fill of this text box. So I'm going to say, okay, the background color, I'm going to have it be yellow. And rerun it. And there's the fill. Now, that's not actually the Power BI yellow. I'm going to show you in the next uh, video how you can go and put a custom color in there so you can see the Power BI yellow and black uh, on your report elements if you so choose. Thanks very much.